Hi folks, I'm Craig Taylor and as always a huge thank you for joining me here on my YouTube channel The Bushcraft Padawan. Regular viewers and subscribers will know that since I started this channel almost a year ago every now and then I like to drop in some very basic introductory 101 videos around map reading and land navigation. I've been doing that throughout the year. One of the things that I have had a few questions, I won't say loads of questions, there's been the odd question, is around what about at night? What do you do differently at night? How does it work at night? I'd like to try night navigation, where should I start? And whilst it would have been very easy for me to just stand in front of the camera and list off a reel of things, I thought to myself, it's been a while since I've been out at night doing a night navigation exercise, so here I am. I've sat at home, I've plotted a little route, not very far, I'll talk about that at the end of the video, not very far in an area that is close to me that I vaguely know, but I'll be honest, I, I don't know it that well. I know of the area, I've walked my dog on a part of it, I'm going to a different part today. So it's unfamiliar territory um, to me, but it's close to home, it feels safe. Um, I've done all the usual things. I left my wife and let my wife know where I'm going, when I'm going to be due back, made sure that my phone was fully charged, got some safety kit on me, um, and she's got um, a, an outline of the route. I've highlighted the section that I, I anticipate that I'll be working in. So the purpose of this video is twofold. One is to get my backside out, uh, practicing what I preach and doing some night navigation. But it's also at each of these checkpoints that I've got, each of these markers, I've got five, six, maybe seven of them. I'm going to stop, I'm gonna put the camera on, I'm gonna talk about what I've done, why I did it, what I didn't do, why I didn't do it, uh, or maybe I'll just throw in a general um, point or observation or tip or hint or whatever you wanna call it around night navigation. And for those of you that are thinking, my God, what's that shining in his face? That's not gonna do his night vision any good. You're absolutely right. I've brought a massive torch with me because my phone, uh, my camera doesn't have infrared on it. So I've brought a massive torch, it's glaring at my face. That's clearly going to hamper things throughout the night. But hey, it should make it more fun, right? So why don't you join me as I wander around um, an area of the South Downs, fairly close to where I live, and hopefully you'll pick up some hints and tips along the way. That's my first navigation leg over with. Let me talk through what I did. I'm going to talk through it in a bit of detail. You'll understand why at the end. What did I do? Well, I knew what my start point was and I knew the point I wanted to get to. I had made, I had taken and recorded the grid references. I then took a grid bearing from my start point to this location. I then converted that grid bearing to a magnetic bearing. I then measured the distance between the start point and here because I wanted to go in a straight line. So I measured the distance on the map. I then converted that to a distance on the ground by using the Roma. I worked out how long that would take me to walk and how many paces I would need to cover that distance. I looked at the contours on the map and figured out what the land would be doing in front of me and to my left and right. I looked for a feature beyond the water feature that I've just come to as a catching feature. If I went too far, what feature would I hit that would tell me I'd gone too far? I would added all of those things together and set off and guess what? Just a few metres under the 250 metres, I arrived at this water feature. And it was quite, it's slightly sunken in the ground and there is a berm around it. And at night you cannot see that berm. So it was really cool to kind of walk up this incline of the berm, think, where's this water feature? Another few steps and I was looking down onto it and you could see the, sun, uh, the starlight reflecting from it. So a very, very uh, positive first leg and a very, um, I guess confirming and encouraging first leg as well. Why did I just list all of those things to you that I listed a second ago? The reason is this. When people say how is it, you know, how do you navigate differently at night? Is it different? In most respects, no it's not. It's no different navigating at night than it is during the day. Your map 
has the same information on it at night as it does during the day. You don't get extra information, the map doesn't suddenly turn into a pumpkin and, and take information away from you. It's the same information on the map. Your compass works exactly the same at night as it does during the day. There's no sort of, <laughs> no, no sort of weird magnetic things that take place at night that stop your compass working in the same way. Grid bearings and magnetic bearings, grid references, the shape of the land, all of that is constant at night as it is during the day. So to answer those people who say, how is it different to navigate at night? Largely, no, it's not. Same principles, same practices. There are some differences. Differences being you tend to take slightly shorter steps at night because you, you don't have the confidence to stretch your leg up. So your pacing may differ at night. You tend to walk perhaps slightly slower at night for the same reasons, therefore your timing may be slightly different. There are some factors that you need to take into account at night. Yes, absolutely there are. I'm not going to argue that point. The point I'm trying to make here is, if you can navigate at day, take those principles and that skill set and they'll be transferable to the night as well. There are some differences and I'll talk about a few more of them as we go through this video. By and large though, the, the, the practices are exactly the same. You can navigate at day, you can navigate at night. So I'm going to uh, pack this kit away, I'm going to start looking at my next navigation leg and I'll see you at the next checkpoint. Me again, who were you expecting? Um, another fairly short leg, just over 300 metres from the water feature to a little triangular track juncture that I'm sat just to the edge of. Pacing was slightly under. I actually ran out of paces, probably about 30 metres or so back. Fortunately, I could see because of the scarring on the, on the tracks that it was here, but that's no excuse. Need to have a think about my pacing on my future legs, maybe uh, give myself a little bit more paces per 100 metres. So what do, I want to, what do I want to talk about at this checkpoint? Well, it's what I've got glaring in my face right now and it's also what I've got sat on my head and that's the use of light when navigating at night. A hell of a lot to go into in this subject and I don't intend to go into all of it or much of it in great detail. Ideal world, Plenty of, of um, plenty of moonlight, no cloud cover, full moon, and you know you, you can pretty much see what you're doing without any artificial light at all. Let's be honest, most of the month and most of the weather here in the UK is not going to allow that the majority of the time. Not a great deal of moonlight tonight at all, lots of thick cloud cover, so I'm not getting much natural light at all. So I'm choosing to use torchlight. Now let's forget about the big glaring torch that's in the face. That's here for the benefit of making this video. It's also a pain in the ass, but it's here for the benefit of this video. I wouldn't be lugging that around and using that normally. I would be using probably a head torch that's on my head. Now. Your eyes work differently at night. I'm not going to go into detail. If you Google rods, cones and vision or rods, cones, eyesight, you'll be able to read about how your rods and cones work differently in daylight and at night time and, and how your vision is affected and so on. It takes about 30 to 40 minutes for your eyes to fully accustom as much as they're going to, to the darkness that we see ourselves in. Now, they'll start to become attuned after five, five to 10 minutes in that region. They'll become fully attuned as much as going to 30 to 40 minutes. So clearly every time I shine this damn torch in my face, it's another 30 or 40 minutes. I'm not waiting that long. I'm just making the best progress that I can. I'd normally use my head torch though. People talk about lenses and filters for your head torch. And I've seen a lot of people, in fact, earlier on today in Facebook, somebody commented on, make sure you use a red filter. And I don't do that, and I've, I haven't done that in decades. And the reason being is, red filters usually, on most maps that I've worked with, prevent you from seeing the contour lines of the map. Now, if you can't see the contour lines of the map, you can't determine what the ground is going to look like around you. So you can't relate ground to map and map to ground. If you can't see the contour lines, you can't work out if it's going to be going uphill or downhill. Is it going to take you longer? Might you be slightly faster on that leg? you lose all of that detail. And for me, being able to see contour lines is incredibly important. So I do not use a red filter. 
Some people suggest using green filters and I've recently read that that's what's recommended for some mountain rescue teams to use green filters because not only can you see contour lines, green filters will also show up blood which red filters won't necessarily show up as easily and clearly if you're working in mountain rescue or in my background in the military being able to see blood at night may unfortunately be something that you're, you're required to do. I don't use any of those filters. Let me just lean forward to the camera. What I actually do is I just cover my lens with masking tape. I make a tiny little pinprick in that masking tape, probably open it up to the, the width of a pencil lead, and that's my filter. I do that for two, three reasons. One, I'm a Yorkshireman, which means I don't have to buy any filters. I don't have to lose the filters. God only knows how many filters I've lost throughout the years, lens filters. and. It filters out the vast majority of the white light. It really, really, really does. It gives you a tiny little pinprick. I've worked by using that approach for decades now. It's never hampered my night vision. I've never found it a problem. I've never lost any filters. I never have to buy any filters. So I just go for good old masking tape, over the head torch lens or any torch lens, a little hole, maybe the size of a pencil lead. That's good enough for me gives me all the white light I need, doesn't give me too much. Now I'm putting aside the tactical use of white light being ex-military, I'm, I'm parking that, that's another consideration that I doubt many people watching this need to worry about, but for protecting your night vision but still getting good light, usable light, I just prefer to use a tape and a pinprick. I'm going to move on now to my next leg which is in that general direction, clearly I'm going to be more accurate than that and I'm going to be looking for a trig point, a triangulation point, a triangulation pillar in my next, uh, at the end of my next leg, at my next checkpoint. So fingers crossed, I see you over there. Here I am at the trig point, well actually I'm not at the trig point, the trig point is probably about 15 metres over my left shoulder can actually get to it because it's part of this kind of fenced compound. I don't know what's going on there, something secretive, but whatever it is, they needed to have a trig point on that location. So I can see it, I can almost touch it through the fence, but I can't actually get to the trig point. What was interesting is as I was coming here, my eyes were working overtime. I was scanning, I knew what a trick point looked like, I knew the shape of it, I knew roughly where to see it. My eyes were working overtime looking for it. Here's a little tip um, for when you are navigating at night and you're looking for something. If you look directly at the object, it will be very, very hard to see. It will become blurred, it will become, uh, it will lack definition, it will become really hard to see. Now I'm no optician but I suspect it's the way that your eyes work at night with the available light. Looking at it doesn't help. What I find useful, let me just move, I've got this shadow across my face there, it's annoying me. What works at night for most people is look at the object then look ever so slightly to one side and above it. For me, I like to look slightly to the right and slightly above it. I don't even have to move my head. We're not talking about a conscious head movement. We're just talking about your eyes going from there to perhaps there, from there to perhaps there. You possibly didn't even notice it on camera. Just a subtle change. Try that out the next time you are out and it's very, very dark. I'm not talking about walking your dog around the streets at night. Try that and you will see the object that you're not quite looking at becomes much sharper, much more defined, much easier to actually see than it does if you actually look directly at it. It's bizarre, I don't know the science behind it, ask an optician, it's the absolute opposite if you like of during daylight hours when you look at something to be able to get the definition of it. So there's my next little tip for when navigating at night. My next checkpoint, good question, what is my next checkpoint, let's have a look. Checkpoint four is a sheep fold and it's actually way off the beaten track, it's kind of down a re-entrance, it's on the end of a spur, so 
quite a lot to, uh, to work with or quite a lot to do to find the next location which is this sheepfold so hopefully I'll see you in there hopefully I'll be out the wind and you'll be able to hear me a little bit better um, because I suspect the wind is playing a few problems with the microphone reception this evening see you with the next RV Ta-da! I'm at the sheepfold, I'm at the sheep pen. You can see the wall behind me. This is, I don't know, probably 20, 30 metres square. It's huge. It hasn't been used in decades. It's massively overgrown. But um, because it was at night, it was difficult to spot until you were on top of it. Unsurprising. Had it been daylight, I would have been able to see it from probably hundreds of metres away. It's fairly flat, undulating, you know, gradually undulating ground around it. I'd have been able to see it from a long way away. Couldn't see it until I was right on top of it. Um, pacing was somewhat off on this particular leg. Again, I was probably about 50 metres short by the time my pacing came up. So I did a little bit of boxing around boxed out a little further a little further and then stumbled upon it so my pacing is consistently under on every single leg so that's something for me to, to, to think about something for me to work on in terms of what you might be able to take away from this as I was coming down here I handrailed a fence for some considerable distance it was about an 800 meter leg from my last known point down here. So quite a long way handrailing the fence. And that was a great feature to follow. I knew it was the right fence because it was at the right, it started at the right altitude that my map said it would. And I looked at my, my altimeter on my wrist. The bearing of the fence was the correct distance that the map suggested it would be. So everything fitted that this was the right fence line to follow down, and I did. And, and handrailing is a great, tool to use both at day and at night. Need to be a little bit careful though of handrailing natural features. So things like um, steep knife edges, things like riverbeds, things that are usually very very reliable during the day because it's hard to wander off a steep, a steep ridge during the day. It's unwise to do so. You can probably tell that you're doing so. Um, rivers are great because they are, you know, they're a fairly constant thing. And even if they're dried up, they're a fairly constant feature. Handrailing things like that at night though can be problematic. If you were to slip, if you were to start to wander off, if you were to trip and fall, you're just introducing a hazard that may not be worth it at night time. You know, I've stumbled several times walking down here. I probably wouldn't have stumbled once during the daylight because clearly I can see my footing. So hand railing features is good. I just did it coming down here. Be mindful of the feature that you're hand railing though and just think about is it the best thing to be using given the limited visibility, the darkness, we're prone to slips and trips and things like that perhaps more at night. My next um, RV point is nothing more than just a contour line on a track. It's not a track junction, it's not a bend in the track, it's nothing specific. It's a specific cut point where a contour line moves, uh, crosses that track. And to help me get to that contour line, now that I'm at a known location, which is the sheepfold, I'm actually going to set the altimeter on my wrist and double check that it is showing what the map suggests the altitude of this sheepfold is and that way I've got something else to rely on I've got the, alt the altimeter on my wrist to be able to refer to once I get to this track and once I think I'm in the area of the contour line I can refer to my watch that will be another clue I won't hinge everything on that but it will be another helping hand to be able to find this specific contour line and the point that it crosses the track about 800 metres back in that direction. I'll see you back over there, fingers crossed. I'm back, I'm still here, just. The last leg was quite straightforward to be honest, from, the, from a fence junction, 150 metres in that direction, that direction, I paced out 150 meters. I knew I needed to be at this point in the track and I knew that this point in the track was where a 120 meter contour line passed it. It was 150 meters from my last known point so I paced out 150 meters and then looked at my watch and it reads 119 meters. I'm, I can live with the meter. I can live with that one meter in altitude error. I'm pretty confident 
that I'm here. So that was, a, that was again something different from my toolkit that I used. Pacing, bearing, uh, setting off from a known position, hand railing another fence line and ultimately also being able to use my altimeter on my watch as well. We're coming to the end of this video. Let's just remember some key points from this. I think it's important to go through them one last time. There are some differences when navigating at night, yes. There are far more similarities though with navigating at night as there are with navigating during the day. It's the same kind of thing. You just can't see as much and you need to be a bit more careful and other things like that and your pacing and timing can change. But broadly speaking, if you navigate at day, apply those principles tonight, you probably won't go very far wrong, pun intended. Think about your vision. I've been a terrible example of this because I've constantly, whenever you see me, I've got white light blinding me in the eye, but hopefully you'll understand that's for the purposes of this video. By all means, experiment with lenses. Please do experiment with just using white light if you want. Think about what I do though. I just use a simple piece of masking tape with a little pinprick hole in it that you may be able to make out. That's good enough for me and it's been good enough for me for many, many, many years. If you're going to be hand railing features at night, it's a good idea. Just be mindful of what those features are though. Don't get yourself into more problems by hand railing potentially dangerous features. If you're trying to see something at night, avoid looking directly at it. Try looking off to the side and slightly above. Off centre scanning is often known as. Try doing that, try experimenting with that. I bet you'll see quite a weird difference that by not looking at it, you're able to see it more clearly. It defies all logic. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's different to, I think, any of the other videos that I've done in the past, and I quite liked doing this. Maybe I'll do more videos like this. If you liked it, give, give it a thumbs up. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Share it with your friends using that share button. Share it with people you don't like using that share button if you thought it was that bad. Share it with your network. And as always, if you're a subscriber, a massive thank you. If you're not yet a subscriber, in this corner of the screen down here, you'll be seeing a little pop-up appear um, of my channel icon. Click on that, you'll become a subscriber. And in this corner of the screen over here, you'll see a playlist pop-up of all of my other navigation videos. Why not click on that and check that, those previous videos out as well. Thanks ever so much for watching. Thanks for joining me on this cold, very cold December evening. And fingers crossed, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, bye.